Hi there, in this video we're going to do an activity to investigate resistors in parallel. This is investigation number one and uh, it is also based on an every circuit app circuit so make sure that you have a copy of the activity sheet downloaded and that you also have the every app circuit open on your mobile device or in your Chrome browser on your laptop or desktop device. Uh, in this case, we need to go to the community space and search for the circuit called NOC Parallel Resistors. Okay, here I have the Every Circuit app open up in a Chrome browser. I'm doing this on a desktop device rather than a mobile device for this video, but the processes and the steps will be exactly the same if you are looking at this on a mobile device. Um, so we need to go to the community space, clicking on that icon over there, and inside the search window, NOC underscore parallel resistors, search for that, and here is the circuit that we are after over here, NOC underscore parallel resistors. Uh, what have we got? We have got a uh, voltage source of 12 volts, we've got three resistors, oops, let's just un three resistors in parallel, resistor number one, which is 1000 ohms, Resistor number 2, 250 ohms, and resistor number 3, again 250 ohms. And we can see quite clearly that they are connected together in parallel. They are not end to end. We can see that they make, in a sense, parallel lines with each other. So it tells us that the circuit is powered by the 12 volt battery and it has the three resistors in parallel and it gives us the resistance values. Now the first question in the worksheet is, what is the current through each resistor? Well, let's take a look. So the current through this first 1 kilo ohm resistor, we can see is 12 milliamps. But the current through the next 250 ohm resistor is 48 milliamps. It's not the same. So already we can see that there's a difference between parallel circuits and series circuits. Remember, in a series circuit, the current was the same all the way through the circuit. At every point in the circuit, we had exactly the same number of electrons flowing past a certain point in a given time. In the parallel circuit, that's not the case. We can see that through this branch of the circuit, and it's also actually quite nicely animated for us by these little green dots, we have far fewer electrons flowing past a certain point in a given time in this branch than we do in this branch. Um, and we can also see yeah, in the third resistor, the current through that third resistor is also 48 milliamps. And it just so happens that this resistance value is exactly the same as this resistance value over here. I want to just ask, just, can you see any relationship between the resistance values and the current flowing through the resistors? Have a look at that and see if you can answer that question at the moment. Now, it asks us, why is the current through each resistor different? So we need to take another look at the circuit. Remember that a resistor offering resistance to a, uh, in a circuit is going to prevent current flowing. It's going to try and prevent the electrons flowing through it. This resistor over here is one kilo ohm. This resistor over here is a lot less, it's four times less, it's only 250 ohms. So the electrons are going to find it a lot easier to go through this path of the circuit than they are going to find it flowing through this part of the circuit. Now the electrons, the current, is going to want to take the easiest route possible. So more of it is going to want to flow through the 250 ohm resistor that one and that one, then is going to want to flow through the one kilo ohm resistor because this is a harder path for it to follow. Current wants to find the easiest path that it can in order to get back to zero volts and the other side here of the battery. So that is why different amounts of current are flowing in different parts of the circuit because we've got different resistances in those different parts of the circuit. But I want you to just notice something over here. The ammeter in this circuit tells us that in total we have 108 milliamps flowing. So there are 108 milliamps flowing through this wire over here. 
Then we get a branch point. Sum of the current flows through this branch. 12 milliamps flows through this branch. The rest of the current flows through this branch. How much of the current is going to flow along this part of the wire? Well, it's going to be 108 minus 12, which is 96. So we've got 96 amps, uh, milliamps sorry, flowing through this wire over here. Now, when it gets to this branch point over here, well, the current again wants to take the easiest path. But this path and this path are equally easy. So that 96 milliamps is going to split itself into two equal play pieces because we've got two equal resist resistances. So 48 milliamps is going to flow down there and another 48 milliamps is going to flow down there. So we've got 96, then 48 flowing out there, 48 flowing through there. 48, 48, 48, until we get back to this joining point. Now we've got 48 milliamps joining with 48 milliamps. So again, we're going to have 96 milliamps flowing through this part of the wire. And those 96 milliamps are going to be joined by these 12 milliamps. So once again, we get back to the total circuit current of 108 milliamps. And if you look pretty carefully, you can see the animation that these dots here are quite a bit brighter than certainly those dots, but they're also brighter than these dots, and these dots are slightly brighter than these dots because we've got 108 milliamps, then we've got 96 milliamps, then we've got 48 milliamps flowing through that part of the circuit. Which resistor has the most current flowing through it? Well, we've just had a look at that, and we can see that these two resistors same resistance values have the same amount of current, and they both have more current flowing through them than the one kilo ohm resistor, because both of these paths, remember, offer less resistance to the current flow, and so more current is going to want to flow through these paths. Which resistor has the least current flowing through it? Well, that's pretty obvious by now. The resistor with the greatest resistance value, this one kilo ohm, has the least current flowing through it. Now, have you been able to see the relationship between the amount of current actually flowing and the resistance values? I hope that you can see that the resistance value of this one kilo ohm resistor is exactly four times the resistance value of this 250 ohm resistor. But can you see that the current flowing through the 250 ohm resistor is actually four times greater than flowing through the one kilo ohm resistor? So they're inversely proportional. They're not directly proportional. The greater the resistance, the less current. The less the resistance, the greater the current. But they are still proportional. The, the ratio between this resistor and this resistor is four to one. So the current is one to four. Between these two resistances, well, the ratio is 1 to 1, so the current is 1 to 1. So how does the current through each part of the circuit relate to the total current? Well, we've had a look at that already. We can see 108 milliamps flowing the total current flowing through the circuit. Each of the currents flowing through each branch of this parallel circuit together this current plus this current plus this current together total up the 108 milliamps. So the total circuit current is equal to the current through each branch of the parallel circuit. Now it asks us, using Ohm's law, calculate the total resistance in the circuit. Remember to convert the milliamps into amps before doing your calculations. So let's have a look at that. So we're going to calculate the total resistance in the circuit using Ohm's law. There's our Ohm's law triangle. We want to calculate total resistance. So resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. Total voltage divided by total current will give us the total resistance. We know that the total voltage is 12 volts. We know that the total current is 0 0.108 amps. Remember, we had to convert milliamps to amps. If you do that on a calculator, you get that the total resistance in the circuit is 111.111 ohms. That should be quite an interesting value for you if you remember the value of the resistances that we have in this parallel circuit. Let's take a look at the worksheet. How does this compare to the individual resistances of the resistors? 
Well, if you look at that, we can see that we've got a very interesting situation here. The total circuit resistance, so all of the resistance of all of these resistors, is in fact less than any of these individual resistors. So the situation here is completely different to a series circuit. Remember, in a series circuit, we could simply add up the value of each of the resistors around the circuit, and we would get the total resistance value. In this case, that is not the case at all. The total resistance of this circuit is 111.11 ohms, a value that is less than any of these individual resistances. Now, using Ohm's law, calculate what total circuit resistance would be necessary for a current of 72 milliamps to flow in the circuit. So let's have a look at that uh, calculation. We're again working our total resistance, which is a voltage divided by current, total voltage divided by total current. The total voltage has remained 12 volts, but now the current that we would like to flow is 72 milliamps or 0 0.072 amps. If you do that simple calculation, you get a total resistance of 166.667 ohms. So in order to reduce the current, we've had to increase the resistance. And that makes sense from this relationship. In, in order to reduce the current, we have to increase the resistance. That makes sense. If this one goes down, this one must go up if the voltage stays the same. So this does make sense. But if we look at our circuit, that resistance value is still less than any of these three resistance values. Hmm. Finally, R says change the resistance value in one of the resistors so that the total current of 72 milliamps flows in the circuit. Okay, well, let's do some experimenting. Um, we can, let's pick this resistor. We can pick any of them, but I'm just going to pick this one at random. Uh, there's a spanner icon to adjust the resistance value. Now, remember, we want a current, a total current of 72 milliamps to flow. So, let's see. If we increase this to 300 uh, amps, uh, that's a current of 100 milliamps. Okay, it's gone down, but it's not 72 yet. So we, we are going in the right direction. If we were to reduce this resistance value, so say to 100, well, let's make it an even 100, we can see that the total current goes up, goes up quite a lot, 108, from 108 to 180 milliamps. So we've got like 120 milliamps flowing through this branch now. But we're going in the wrong direction. We were going in the right direction. We saw the 300 and do it. Let's try 400. 400 takes us to 90 milliamps. Right direction, still not quite at 72. Uh, let's try 600. 80 milliamps. Oh, we're getting closer. Let's try 800. 75 milliamps. We're getting a lot closer. Uh, let's try one kilo ohm, a thousand ohms. Bingo. We get to a total circuit current of 72 milliamps. Now, can you see that because this resistor and this resistor have the same value, the same amount of current is flowing through them. This resistor hasn't changed. So given this voltage of 12 volts, the same amount of current is going to flow. Ohm's law for this resistor still applies. So this 48 milliamps has not changed at all. But 48 plus 12 plus 12 is 48 plus 24. That gives us the 72 milliamps we need. So the current flowing through this one and this branch are the same because the resistors are the same and the current flowing through this 250 ohm resistor is the same as it was because it still has the same voltage and it still has the same resistance. So Ohm's law will still dictate that the current through this resistor is 48 milliamps.